Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a traditionally published author and welcome to this week's writing vlog. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be working on this week, which is going to be my short story for the No Harm Done anthology. I'll have a link below for that. Um, it's being edited by Cersei Moskowitz. It's an anthology of horror stories by Black authors and I'm really, really excited to be contributing to it. Um, so definitely check it out on Goodreads, etc. But before I go into what I'm going to be doing for this week, I wanted to quickly share some publishing updates, which actually might not be quickly because I realized how many things I had to update and share that have happened since my last writing vlog. So in any case, um, I wanted to share all of these. So first publishing update, let's go in order. So we're going to start with the Blood Like Magic update. <laughs> so the Blood Like Magic update, Blood Like Magic has officially earned out, which I'm really excited about. So your advance in publishing is your advance against royalties. So you have to sell enough books to equal your advance amount. And after that, you can start earning royalties. And so Basically, what that means is that Blood Like Magic has earned out its advance. So it's half of the advance um, because it's split into two because I have two books in that deal. And so, yeah, I'm really excited. It has earned out. It's earned out before it's even been a year, which is really exciting to me. Um, so I'm really, really happy about that. And also um, because a friend went into a bookstore and like looked at the copy of Blood Like Magic on the inside flap, we could see that it's also gone into its second print run. Um, so that's also really exciting. The first print run doesn't necessarily have to be sold out for them to start the second, um, as far as I know, but it's still really exciting that like there's enough demand that they've been like let's print more copies of the hardcover especially because the paperback is coming out this year I kind of figured they would just shift into the paperback and wouldn't like print anymore um so that's really exciting that it's gone into a second print run so that's all the exciting fun like magic news thank you so much to everyone that's been supporting the book and supporting it um yeah I'm just really excited <laughs> um and the second bit of news which is for blood like fate which is the sequel to blood like magic um, and that is I've gotten my marketing plan from my publisher for what they're going to be doing to promote Blood Like Fate and it's really like honestly amazing like I'm so excited about all of the stuff that they have planned and all of the things they have on there um, it is a more extensive marketing plan than the one I got last year which is also really exciting um, so yeah and they like did a lot for me last year too so it's really exciting to like know that even more is going to be coming for Blood Like Fate and so I'm really excited excited about that as well. And now the let's do <laughs> since we're going in order updates for book three, which is Butcher Birds. Um, and so I have seen cover things cover things have been sent to me. So I'm very excited about that. Um, I've gone back to them because I had uh, asked about some changes to the font. Um, so the design team is working on that now. So we're still in the process of doing that. Um, and we've been talking, I've been talking with my editor about some like possible details for the back cover and like some possible um, effects for the book itself. So like the physical hardcover, like some cool extra effects on it. Um, um, we've talked about, you know, some like interior details that might be happening. And so that's really exciting. The book has also been launched in house. So the launch in house is essentially it happens like roughly a year before the book comes out. I believe it's separated by seasons. So this would have been the spring 2023 in-house launch. Um, and my editor said the book got a really wonderful reaction from in-house from all the people, um, that work in publishing and that people were asking about reading the book and things like that. And that was really exciting and positive. And so this last edit that I did, which was my line edit of Butcher Birds, they're actually going to be sending that out to people in house so that they can get a chance to read it and like get excited about the book and things like that. So that's really like exciting. It's like wild to see so many bits and pieces moving and like starting to like really feel like the book is coming coming to completion, which is exciting. Um, I don't know when we'll be doing cover sharing things, but I feel like 
the cover and the new title will be shared together. So I think that you'll probably see it all in one. And then the final publishing update, which is for book four, is that my proposed 2024 book, Bear Hunt, has been approved. So this means Bear Hunt will be the book that I have coming out in 2024, which I'm really excited and relieved about. I'm so like, I'm really attached to this story idea. And I had always said like, if somehow it got rejected, I was going to write it at some point in the future anyway, like I was going to make this book happen. And so it's really exciting to me that the team is behind it and they're excited and we're going to be going forward with it. Um, and so, yeah, so I'm excited about that. I've talked a little bit about Bear Hunt before, but it's essentially about a wealthy black family and who lives in Toronto and they earn, they own a needs-based school um, and some murders happen there and the main character's brother is implicated. And so they're trying to basically clear his name. Um, there's a lot more elements to it than that, but like, <laughs> that's what I would feel comfortable sharing right now. Um, especially because I haven't written it yet and so things might change once I actually start drafting it but I know at least those elements will definitely stay the same so I'm happy to share those and so yeah that's all of my publishing updates it's kind of wild that like stuff is happening for all of my books like it feels a little bit mind-blowing to like realize there's so much going on and so many moving pieces but it's all really good stuff really positive stuff and so I'm feeling really happy about that um and it's a good it's a good feeling um because I feel like in December there were like a there were some things that I was kind of like uh what's happening and like now it feels like everything is very like things are happening, things are good, everything is fine. Um, so yeah, those are my publishing updates. And now for what you have come to, what this vlog is actually about, which is this short story. Um, so I'm going to be, my plan is today, so Monday, I'm going to plot the entire thing. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to draft everything. So it has to be 7,000 words. I think I'm going to aim for 6,500 because I know myself and I know I overwrite. And so I think it's good to give myself a little bit of padding so I have room to add in edits. Um, so that's what I'm going for. I'm going for 6,500 words. And then on Friday, I'm going to self-edit the entire thing. So I'll read over it and make notes notes probably in the morning and then in the afternoon I'll go and do those revisions so then I'll have the entire story good to go by the end of this week and then I can kind of like let it sit for a week and then see if there's any changes I want to make but yeah I'm really excited about the idea it uh, features um a sleepover it features uh an urban legend um and it features it's really about friendships it's about strong friendship ties between a group of girls and so I'm really excited to write about that and to make it spooky and like creepy so that's what I'm gonna be working on this week and I will update you on Wednesday which I would have done my plotting and I would have done some drafting so exciting very small book haul to share with you. <laughs> so um, I will link it. I think it'll be over here. Um, but I did a video about the best books I read in January. And one of the um, books that I highlighted was um, Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall. Um, it was like a, like I would call it like a YA fantasy horror 
people are like, maybe just a horror. No, it's got it's got some fantasy elements. It's hard to stick it down, but like at least a horror um, by Kate Alice Marshall. I really, really loved it. And so I know that um, they have a new book that's going to be coming out this year in 2022. Um, it's called These Fleeting Shadows. It's been comped to The Haunting the Hill House. I'm really, really excited about it. And I've pre-ordered it already. And I was like, oh, I should read like her backlist. And so then I went on Indigo. I was going to borrow them from the library, but then I was just like, if I'm going to order these fleeting shadows, I'm going to have a physical copy of that book. And I'm going to have a physical copy of Rules for Vanishing. I may as well just get the whole Kate Alice Marshall set. So <laughs> I got um, this book. I think this is maybe their second book. Um, and so it's called... Uh, I am still alive. Uh, that's the cover. Uh, it's really cool. It like matches like it's the same sort of font. Uh, well, it's the same sort of font of the next book I'm going to show. It's a little bit different from Rules for Vanishing, but it's similar to these fleeting shadows. But I liked the Rules for Vanishing cover I had more, so I didn't want to switch to the cover that matches this more. But this one is basically, let's see. Oh, this one's set in the Canadian wilderness. I forgot that. That's really exciting. I'm excited about that. <laughs> Um, but her cabin has Jess's cabin has burned to the ground the father she was just getting to know is dead and she's stranded alone in the Canadian wilderness so like excited for that one um, and then this one I got in hardcover the other one was only available in paperback in the one that matched so anyway so then I got this one is called Our Last Echoes and this one is um, I think this one came out it seems to have come out after Rules for Vanishing, so maybe like third book or something like that. Um, Kid House Marshall also writes middle grade, but anyway, um, this one says, In 1973, the 31 residents of Bitter Rock disappeared. In 2003, so did my mother. Now I've come to Bitter Rock to find out what happened to her and to me, because Bitter Rock has many ghosts and I might be one of them. So, very excited for this one as well excited to read both of these um I've gotten into this habit these days where like I like a book from I really like a book from an author and I'm like okay time to read the whole backlist time to get through every single book they have um so that was my little book haul there um that I took three minutes to talk about even though it was literally two books anyway writing stuff <laughs> so Monday I did my plotting I had originally planned to do this book as like a single POV, not book, sorry, short story, as like a single POV. Um, but then it's a event with a sleepover and there's actually two sleepovers. So there's one that happens and some stuff goes down and then they do a second one to kind of make up for what happened at the first one is how I can put it, <laughs> have it be the least spoilery possible. And so I was just going to do the perspective of the most recent sleepover that they're having. Um, but then I decided, I was like, what if I flashed back and forth in time between the sleepover that they're having now and the one that they had in the past? And I decided that would be really fun. And so I had to essentially plot two separate stories and then combine those together into one narrative. So yeah, it was a lot of work. <laughs> I was like, Lizelle, you're so annoying doing stuff like this, but I'm really, really excited about it. And so I've separated it basically into like six chunks alternating between POVs um, and like loosely like sticking to the save the cat structure. And so I did that. And <laughs> so I'm working on basically two chunks each day, one in the morning, and one in the afternoon. And I set word count goals for each chunk to help me stay on task and stick to my word count and keep the pacing good. And of course, the first thing I did was immediately overwrite, immediately overwrite. So I yesterday I was three, I was a thousand words over what I was supposed to write. So I was supposed to write like 2200 words that day. And I wrote like 3500 words. So I just, it's okay. 
It's the first draft and I'm like, I'll fix it later. I will cut it down. I will fix it. I think the thing about like being in the beginning is that I'm still getting used to the character and I'm still getting used to the character's voice. And so I kind of need more words to feel it out. And I think that's really what ended up happening. And I'll be able to do better at cutting down um, once I like go back and revise because I think, you know, I mentioned the mom and the stepdad and I think I could probably just cut that out and just be like my mom left and like move on with life um and there's some like very long introductions I did where I'm like it doesn't need to be that long so I already know what I can cut so I'll go back when I do my revisions but today I did my morning session of writing and that went really well. So I actually stuck to my word count as I was supposed to. I wrote exactly how much I was supposed to write. I was actually a little bit under, which was great. So now I know. <laughs> I think it did. I think I did better today because I've had a whole day to get used to the character and the character voice. And so now I like I'm on it so I know where to stop and I'm not putting in extra things and things like that. I also think I ended up plotting more things than I had word count for. So I've been selectively cutting out bits and pieces. Um, so today has gone much better and I hope we will continue to do so. And I hope uh, tomorrow will also be like that. Tomorrow I'll be finishing up the story. Um, so yeah, I'm hoping I can actually stick to the word count. My arm is starting to fatigue even though it's like resting anyway but I'm feeling really good about the story I'm really excited about it I've like I don't know it's just like one of those like horror tropes of like a girl sleepover like I just think that's so fun so I'm really excited about doing a sleepover story I've been like wanting to do a sleepover story for a while so I think it's really fun I think it's gonna go really well for the short story format and I'm really excited about how like this whole story is gonna like wrap up and stuff like I'm super excited about it and I'm really enjoying writing a short story because previously I've only written adult literary short stories I've never written a young adult short story so it's really fun to be able to do that and to see how that's all gonna come out together so yeah that's the update for today and I will see you Oh gosh, on Friday, maybe I'll see you really quickly on Thursday just to wrap up the plotting and like, I'm not the plotting, to wrap up how drafting went and then I'll see you again on Friday. Mm -hmm. I didn't update on Thursday, so let me recap Thursday for you. So on Thursday, that was my last drafting day. So I ended up drafting about 1700 words, which was over, but that's the name of the game at this point. Um, so I ended up doing that and I finished, I made myself like get in my, like get my butt down to write at nine. Um, so I was done that by like, 10 10 30 um so i made good time and then what i thought about was i ended up like started reading over and making revision notes so my plan was to only revise today on friday and like to only do drafting on thursday but it's just i had so much extra time and i started to get like worried about like if i would be overwhelmed doing too many revisions on Friday. So I read through the entire thing on Thursday and I made revision notes so that I would have something 
so that you know when on Friday I opened up the document I would have notes about exactly what I was doing so when I was reading through it again I would have notes on everything and I could think about the whole story but I ended up not having a lot of things like not having a lot of editing notes essentially um, like I was pretty pleased with everything and my only note to myself was I need to cut some stuff down I really need to cut some stuff down so I made peace with the 50 with the 6500 words like I just like I wasn't gonna get a 6500 word story but my story was like at 7400 words and I was like I can't I need to cut that down so um, when I was was reading through everything and I was like tweaking things I was also like finding places where I could cut down things that being said I don't just like cut anything like I am discerning so there are places where I know things can be cut and places where I'm like no this is really necessary so like in the first beginning chapter because this is about a group a friend group of four girls I had done this really lazy thing where I, when I was drafting because it's the first draft where I was like this is so-and-so's name and this is kind of like a clue about what they look like and um the sorts of things they like so you know it was that sort of thing of like uh Nova tucks her black hair behind her uh, ear and it's like a really stark contrast to her pale white skin because I want you to know that she has black hair and she's white <laughs> but it was like it was just like I did it in that paragraph form for like each character and it was so sickening I couldn't leave it um, and so I ended up cutting those I pulled up some dialogue that I had and I blended in the character descriptions into the dialogue so when each character was speaking for the first time that's when you were kind of hearing more about like what they looked like and I think that was a much better way to do it so that helped me cut some words in one section I did have some like dialogue where I had brought in another character and I just kind of was like this is this is pulling up like 300 words worth of things or like as I think it was actually probably more like 100 words but every word counts 100 words and I was just like I don't need this I can just make one of the existing girls say this instead of having them like FaceTime someone else and having them say it so I just like cut that whole bit and I rearranged that so with all of my revising and cutting I was able to get it down to 7,003 words which I'm very very happy with and um, hopefully <laughs> when I'm editing I'll still have some like grace and it won't get too long um, but yeah I'm happy where with where I've landed and with the story in general I'm really pleased about the story like I do think it's really fun um, I find that in my stories that I have, you know, my novels that I have coming out, um, they're very much focused on like family dynamics and complicated family relationships and friendship ends up being kind of something that comes after that, um, along with other themes that I like to talk about in books. And with this, it was nice to focus very intensely on a friendship between four teenage girls like that was really fun I liked being able to have that sort of focus and being able to explore that topic that I haven't as a main theme in my books so far um, so that was really fun I really enjoyed that I also you know in short stories I think there are certain things that you can do that you can't necessarily get away with in a novel um, like I think you could have you know sometimes I feel like you can have more dramatic twists and endings than you necessarily can and I do feel like there's a certain forgiveness of you don't have to get super maybe I'm wrong about this maybe my editor will say different but it feels like you don't have to get super in depth excuse me sorry in explaining every bit of minutia um, because it's a short story and it's kind of understood that you know some things you're going to make the connections without like getting super super detailed the way you might with a novel so that was interesting but yeah I think I, I can't remember if I mentioned before or not but I've previously only written adult literary short stories and I had never applied structure to them I always discovery wrote them editing Lizelle popping in real quick here just to say that what I mean is when I did discovery writing I had zero structure when I did it that is not to say that people who discovery write don't put in any structure because they can do that I just mean that my style of discovery writing just meant that I just kind of wrote 
stream of consciousness and I just kind of put down on paper whatever I felt like um, towards a destination without necessarily applying, you know, a beginning, middle and end or say the cat structure or any kind of structure to it. I was just writing. Um, they, yeah, they basically had a beginning and an end and like the middle I was just doing whatever I wanted. <laughs> Um, and so this was my first time doing a short story and really applying structure to it. So I did, I basically started with Save the Cat and then I kind of adapted it to my needs and like played around with it. Um, I think that's something like, you know, sometimes I know people think structures like Save the Cat create these like really formulaic books, but you don't have to do exactly that. Like you, like once you know the structure, you can play around with it and you can like, rejig things as needed and you can like f play with stuff um and that's what I found I was really doing with this short story and it was just really nice to like have something complete like I finished a story and it's very very polished in a short amount of time because it's a short story but it's really nice to have it like I felt like very like yay accomplished <laughs> of this story um and I really really like it I'm very happy with it and so that was really exciting and I've been really appreciating this opportunity um to be in an anthology period um because you know anthology is like in traditional publishing it's very like it's a very strange process to me so like for 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 most people how I know they've gotten into anthologies is people just ask them so there are some anthologies that will accept like submissions and it's like a contest to get that last spot in the anthology so that you can like bring in like emerging writers um but like my experience of anthologies and traditional publishing as my understanding has been it's like a very invitation thing like people the person who is editing or creating the anthology they think of people who they think will fit well with it and then they ask them if they want to be in it so there was a period of time where I was like oh my gosh I would love to be invited into an anthology and I was like ah it's never gonna happen <laughs> <laughs> and then that came through so it was really fun to get to do this experience and yeah I just really I really enjoyed writing my short story like I didn't I expected to like enjoy it as I enjoy all writing but I really really liked it like I really thought this was a really fun process and I'm really excited about you know potential short stories in the future um and what else did I want to say about this process process oh I really liked how I set this up so I really liked plotting it all on Monday and drafting for those three days and then revising on the last day even though I did a bit of revising on Thursday I think now I've calmed down I think next time I would just do all of my revising on Friday um and yeah so I really liked that I thought it was a good way to focus in on the project only that project for a week and then come of it, come out of it with something that feels you know completed that I can then send to beta readers and has been sent to beta readers so I'm going to be getting their feedback um, and I'll be working on it again not next week but the week after I'll implement all their feedback and I'll polish it up and then I will be sending it off to my editor for that anthology and that'll be a deadline met um yeah that'll be my how many deadlines have I had this year already Two? potentially <laughs> that'll be my third deadline met so that's exciting um and yeah that's pretty much it for this process um if you have any questions for me that I can like answer um feel free to put them in the comments and I will get to those and answer them to the best of my ability and if I don't know something I'll just say that I don't know something <laughs> I won't give you false information um so yeah if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye